If you want to learn more about the Nikon 18 to 140 zoom lens and come along for an awesome photo adventure, then stay tuned. This video is for you. Thanks to my friends at Robert's Camera, I was able to get my hands on this Nikon 18 to 140 zoom lens. Now, I have shot with a lot of lenses over the years, but I've never shot with this 18 to 140. This lens is considered to be one of the staple zoom lenses from Nikon. And I believe it's because of the optical distortion. I think there's much less in this lens than what you might find in that 18 to 200 or the 18 to 300. And that's kind of obvious because you're not at the extreme zooms. So I really think this lens is going to be something to put through the paces. Now I've attached this lens to my trusty Nikon D3400 body, which I have right here. Now some of you were observant enough to notice in my last video that I was missing the battery cover right there. Now I don't really have a glorified story as to what happened to that battery cover, so I'm just going to tell you, I bought it this way. <laughs> this, this was the last body. It was on display at the store. And so I was wanting this body because I was going to test it out and it was missing that cover. So I ended up getting a great deal on this body right here. And so that's the story behind it. Nonetheless, like I do with my other videos, I'm going to start off by level setting and providing a game plan. Now, I came in last night and I camped out on the trail and you might be saying, where are you at? Well, I'm in the great state of Kentucky and once again, I'm near this area of Red River Gorge. You can see behind me, it's early morning and the fog is in the valley. Now, we're going to have some clouds and sun come in today and it's probably going to be a little more cloudy than sunny. We'll see. I know it's not supposed to rain though and I am going to hike around this area and just really have a lot of fun. And then tonight, I'm going to camp out again, I'm going to get up in the morning, and we're going to do much of the same. Now, many of you have asked, hey, Mark, when you backcountry camp, what do you take with you? Well, I'm going to start off by giving you just a quick review of what I bring with me when I backcountry camp. I'm going to head back to the trail, and I'm going to show you what that looks like. Not spend a lot of time on it, but it's just going to give you an idea of what I bring with me. And maybe if you go out into the wilderness, you might think to bring some of that with you as well. That's really what it's all about. Now I'm gonna be shooting in RAW. I'm probably gonna stay in aperture priority for the most part, and I'll probably get into manual. And I do have my variable neutral density filter with me. So if I come across any sort of waterscapes, I'm gonna put that on and see if we can grab that nice smooth flowing water. Just depends on what we come across out here. But I can tell you, I'm really looking forward to this weekend, unwinding and really having some fun. So with all that said, let's go ahead, jump right in and get this started. Time to provide a quick flyover with my gear. Now, I'm shooting all this video with the DJI Osmo, which is hooked to the Joby Gorillapod right now. And I'm just gonna use the built-in microphone, so I trust this video will be okay and the sound will be okay. But I'm gonna start off with my backpack. Now this is the Teton. Explore 4000. Now keep in mind, Teton didn't send this to me. They're not sponsoring this. I'm not getting paid for this. I actually bought this with my own money. I just really like this backpack. It's solid. It, the construction seems like it's, 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 uh, it's really good quality. The stitching's good. I've had no issues with this and I packed all kinds of stuff in there. Um, this thing is 65 liters. So that means it's a big, big bag. We got cargo compartments on the side. So what do I put in this? Well, um, you can see right here there's two cargo uh, compartments. This one holds my toiletries. So toothpaste, toothbrush, uh, vitamins, things like that. That's what's in this uh, pouch right here. This right here is more for survival. So I have my fire starter in here. I have a uh, paracord. I also have my lensatic compass. So it is important that you understand how to use a compass. If you'd like for me to create a video on how to use a compass and doing some other back camping or backpacking uh, type videos, just let me know in the, in, in the comments below and maybe I'll dive into that. But it is really important to know how to use this compass when you go backcountry camping. Um, and also got, uh, what else do I have in here? Eh, car keys, right? <laughs> so it's kind of important. Um, all right, in this uh, in this pocket here onto the side, on this side over here, I keep snacks in here. Mandarin oranges, granola bars, things like that. 
Now, um, there's two webbing pouches here on the side as well, and I use these for water. Now, I got a regular water bottle on this side, and over here, I keep my, right here, Bottle Joy. Now, what I like about this is that there is a filter attached to it. You can see it right here. And this allows me to fill up in any stream. I can drink from that stream. Now, you got to suck kind of hard to get the water going through it. But once you do, it's fine. You will not dehydrate with this water bottle. That's what I like about it. What else do I have here? Well, I've got trekking poles. Now, these are from Trekology. Now, I really like these poles right here. You can see they've got sort of a, uh, it's a metal wire. I don't know how well we can see this on the video, but it runs through it. Um, these are just solid. Uh, they're well constructed. I don't have any issues with them. I don't always use trekking poles, but it depends on the terrain. So I decided to bring these with me and strap these to the pack. I also have a pruning saw with me. Now I bring this because um, this is to get firewood and to cut limbs and things like that off. And this is really lightweight. And again, this straps to the outside of the pack as well. This is more of a luxury item right here. I typically use the little foam things to plug my ears because I'm a really light sleeper. I just didn't have any foam things with me. So I decided to grab these kind of last minute. But these are over the head uh, hearing protection. Again, you definitely don't need these, but it's just something that I have with me. I also have my mess kit and I have my hammock with me. Now these are both from Gold Armor. Now I've had these for about a year or two. Um, they work well and I really like the customer service with Gold Armor uh, just because I've exchanged messages with them over the years and I believe they're based here in the U.S. They might be out in California. I'm not 100% sure on that, but again, I just really like those products right there. Now, I also have this little chair. I don't typically bring this with me as well, but um, it was just one, one of those kind of last minute grabs. It's lightweight, it's easy to set up, and it just gives you a place to kind of relax without um, you know, sitting on a stump or whatever. So it's kind of nice to have that. Again, not required. Um, I also have my cell phone with me. Now, on this cell phone, I have an application called All Trails. I have the pro version of it. They make a free one, but the pro version allows you to download maps and use this application and the map without having cell service. Now that's an important thing because a lot of times when you're backcountry camping, depending on where you're at, you may not have cell service. And I find that to be the case quite often. So it works out well for me. But if the battery runs out or for whatever reason you lose this thing, that's the reason I carry the compass and always carry a printed map. So I've got a printed map with me as well. And again, that's just in case uh, that electronic fails me. What else do I have with me? Well, because I do a lot of photography, obviously, I have my Zomi tripod here. Um, now, this is relatively heavy. This is where you can get into spending some money and get those really lightweight tripods. I might do a review on some tripods later, those really lightweight ones, in case you're really into backcountry camping and you're watching the weight. Now, keep in mind with all this gear I bring that I am not through hiking. Um, I'm just going out for maybe two or three nights, and um, that seems to work well for me. Now, I also have this pouch right here. This is for the sleeping bag. Now, it's kind of tight in here, but there's a little, a little trap in here you can unzip and open up this entire area. So I put my sleeping bag in here in the main compartment, and I also pack some additional provisions with me, such as food. <laughs> So I like to bring some soup with me and some fruit and things like that. But I'll put that in the top up here. And then in the very top of this right here, um, I'll put my bedroll up here. And I'm going to show you that in a minute. Um, and then also there's, there's a zipper in here. So I've got a little uh, compartment for my puffy coat, which I'm going to show you in a minute as well. Um, but this pack is, it's just got so much room in it. And it's also got room for a three liter water bladder. Now I don't have one in here. Uh, you can put one in if you want. I just don't happen to have one with me. And I think that covers just about everything here. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the most important items. And that is the tent. Now that tent straps to the outside of the pack here. Let's go see it. Now this tent is nothing special. I've had this tent for probably 20 years. And this is just a two-person tent, so it gives me some room in there to kind of move, move around in. And you can see underneath the tent, I have a tarp down there. Now, I use that tarp to help keep the condensation from forming on the tent itself. And it seems to work well. It also helps to protect the bottom of the tent. 
inside the tent what do we have well i got my puffy coat right here so this is just to keep me warm in case it gets really cold outside i love the puffy coat because it can just scrunch down into a really small area and it's easy to transport now this is my sleeping bag this is a cold weather sleeping bag it'll keep me warm if the temperature gets down into like the low 20s last night we were right around 50 degrees maybe in the upper 40s and uh, i was nice and fine in that sleeping bag but this is what's really cool this is an air mattress and an air pillow. Now, I've been using these for a little while. Now, these two are from Gear Doctors. Now, I like the people over there because I know some of them, and uh, they're just cool and easy to deal with. Um, but I want to go over just how this works because I can tell you I've slept on the ground before, and if you sleep on an air mattress, um, it just helps with the overall sleep. I get up in the morning, I feel a little more energetic, my sleep's better, and I'm ready to go hiking and really kind of get the day going. So when I got in last night, I went to set this up though. Um, I just want to show you real quick. This has air in it right now, and it's got these little tacky dimples on it, which help to prevent the pillow from moving around on the mattress itself. But I'm going to go ahead and let the air out. See how quick that is, right? So the air just comes out just like that. Now when I came in last night, I'm thinking to myself, you know, you got to put the air in it. And you might be thinking, well, do you just sit there and you have to blow this up because I can take time? And you can. You know, I could do that and put the air in that way, or you can use the air sock. Now, I really like this thing right here. This just attaches to the pillow just like this. It also attaches to the air mattress, and then you trap air in it just like this. Just kind of get the air in and then scrunch it up, and then you start to you just kind of push it down. You can hear it going into the pillow, and just like that, you got air in your pillow and it was that quick so you're not uh i'm usually not gas trying to put air into it and just like that i got air in my pillow and i'm good to go i hiked back off the trail from last night and changed out my gear slightly um something to understand is that you know, there's a difference between backcountry camping uh, for a couple of nights versus going out and back on a long day hike so I've got a different backpack on me right now. Obviously, it doesn't have my tent. Um, I did pack some snacks in there and my hammock. And um, also got my lensatic compass right here and my paracord. Um, you just never know what you might encounter. So, yeah, I say it's, uh, it's just important to know what you plan to do um, on that given adventure and then pack accordingly. Now, with that said, Let's jump in and have some fun. My world, my God, if I'm gonna make it, then it's time that I speak my mind. Can't take that away. Wait, so you gonna use Young motherfucker, take this, take that, I can take it. But I might just lose my mind on my shirt anyway. And if it all came crashing down, just know that it won't break me down. Well, put me on the front line. Don't 
child Go on, push out I just finished making the ascent up to the Indian staircase on the backside. So if you're familiar with this area, you'll know it's a really sharp ascent. Now, I gotta tell you, doing that without the gear is challenging in itself. But doing it with all of that gear is crazy. And honestly, I don't know if I'd do that again because this is heavy. I mean, I bet my pack is, you know, I'm gonna say 40 to 60 pounds in that range. I have to take a breather, but I am at the top. So now I'm gonna find a place to camp out and get my gear set up and uh, try to get some firewood and all that good stuff. One shot and I'm hauled in, but I don't care cause I'm called in. Woke up Sunday morning with a song stuck in my head. I'm seeing things right before me, used to own me, but that's the old me. And give it up was the best thing that they said. It rained all last night <laughs> and uh, yeah I got a little wet inside my tent but uh, it has definitely been an adventure so now it's time to try and hike back out of this place and grab some shots along the way I finally made it out of the rain-soaked forest. And I can tell you that it started raining late last night and it really hasn't let up since. And it was a challenge getting off that ridge line with my heavy, heavy pack. But again, I know I pack a little bit of extra in there and I wanna say that when you do something like this again, you must be careful and be safe. Let people know where you're gonna be. Let them know when you expect to be back. Now, early this morning, I heard somebody yelling on the other side of the ridge, and I think that they took a bad spill over there, so I hope they're okay. 
And for all the people that I met on the trail, it was nice meeting you, and I trust that you've had a safe journey. Now, I've taken shelter underneath this overpass here so I can finish up and give you a few final thoughts on this lens. Now, I really enjoyed shooting with this 18-140. to 140. I feel that the zoom mechanism in the lens is nice and smooth. It doesn't stick, it just feels to move in and out nice and easy. And I think that the resulting image quality from this lens is great. And this lens isn't too heavy, it's not too light. I just think it's a good compromise. I really like this lens right here. Now, if this video has helped you out, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to follow me on Instagram, I'm going to post a link in the description below, so go ahead and do so. And if you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel. It's called Real World. More often than not, I post videos about photography and technology, but you never know. So until the next video, take care of yourself and be safe.